So we've been on this trip for about nine months now, and we've taken about every possible type of train. Taking fancy ones in Europe, really not so fancy ones in Europe. The legendary Glacier Express around Switzerland and some really rickety, most of the way terrifying vertical and horizontal elevators in Genoa, Italy. It's really cool. It's like you're in a mine shaft. But the one type of train that we haven't taken this entire time is a bullet train. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're in Seoul and we're heading to Busan and uh, hopefully no zombies. Let's go. However, actually buying the train ticket was pretty tough. All the machines for foreigners were broken, but luckily the information desk was able to help us. At uh, 1 p.m. Yeah. Our train cost about $60 per person today, and it's gonna bring us all the way to the other side of the country in just over two and a half hours. So cool. Seoul Station is really cool, much like many of the subway and train stations here in Seoul. There's so many cool shops and cute cafes, shopping malls even, so that if you needed to kill some time while you're waiting, it's a great place to do it here. They even have charging stations. And of course there's a food court. <laughs> of course. Looking. I'm a bit embarrassed to say this, but we didn't even realize that Korea had bullet trains. I mean, we just didn't know. <laughs> That's bright. <laughs> and the trains are so nice and modern. The seats all have charging ports. The train is absolutely dead quiet. It's comfortable. It's super fast. And it even has incredible cool, pretty weird vending machines. I've heard that the food on these bullet trains is incredible, but I don't know where it is, so I gotta go find it. There's a vending machine on the train. Figuring out how to get food out of the vending machine was quite a challenge. Touchless didn't work here, and neither did Apple Pay, and neither did our T-Money card that we tried cramming in there. But the little card reader did have a bunch of touchscreen buttons to press, uh, none of which that my phone could translate, so I just had to guess. A super nice and very patient crew member on the train noticed me struggling and came by to help out. This process is very much how we learned how to do literally everything in South Korea. Since we can't read anything, it's just a process of trial and error until you get it right. Or until somebody feels bad for you and comes over and helps. It's actually really, really fun. So they didn't have more real food on the train, so I just got a bunch of snacks out of the vending machine. I was really hoping that they'd have the food cart, but I guess it's not running today. First thing, cheese cream. Cream, cream cheese. <laughs> how good and tasty all these snacks are. Probably my favorite part about all of this is how cute everything is. Look at this packaging. It's so cute. Everything's so cute. These are just called soft white. These are my favorite so far. They have just enough crunch to them and then the inside of them is totally soft. These are the best ones. We're talking really quietly because it's genuinely like a library in here. I can hear them crunching. It's a stark difference between here and trains in the U.S. Trains in the U.S. are generally a place for like more people talking. What trains in the U.S.? It's honestly a bit unsettling just how fast these things go. And then to know that you're rocketing along at 200 miles an hour inside one of these tubes and it feels like you're barely moving at all. It's a little jarring. We're in the middle part of the cars where people can sit and take phone calls and just uh, be in non-silence for a little bit, which is kind of nice. This train goes up to 190 miles per hour and for those of you that desperately want to know, that's uh, 305 kilometers per hour. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you stop and think, how in the world did I get here?
I mean, I know we literally are getting to Busan on a bullet train, which is super cool, but still, the question remains. How did we actually afford this whole 10 month long trip that we're on? We're almost there. That went by so fast. A lot of you have been asking us this same question and many of our friends and family have too. This is exactly what we created a whole course about. Even though the public transportation and trains like this one are super affordable, actually getting to South Korea in the first place isn't usually cheap. But by using miles and points, our parents were able to book a flight over here for literally $23.10 per person. If you want to learn how to do the same, the first 1,000 people that click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, which is plenty of time to go through our course and a few of the other great classes on there too. Yay, we made it to Busan and it is so nice. What a warm welcome. Unsurprisingly, this train station is also impeccably designed. Beautiful, smells like coffee, has cute stores everywhere. I love Korea. So after that wonderful and totally zombie free two and a half hour train ride, we are in Busan. We just gotta make it to our hotel now. To do that, we had to use the Uber or Lyft of Korean app called Kakao Tea. Time to get us a Kakao Tea. Kakao Tea is basically the way that anybody can get a car share, get a taxi, rent a bike or a scooter, even pay for things like at the convenience store or pay for your actual taxi. You can choose different ways that you can pay for the taxi. If you happen to have a Korean credit card or a bank, you can set up auto payment through that with a debit or credit card. But if you're like us and you're visiting, you can either pay the driver with cash, credit card, debit card, or even your T-Money card. Whoa. So we have more than a little bit of experience with this particular vehicle. So if this is your first time watching us, I'm Josh. I'm Lisa. And we've recently converted this Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van into our full-time home. And now we're traveling around the Western United States with our cat, Octavius. Uh, more than a lifetime worth. <laughs> he won't come out. Kitty, get out. He's How in our he kitchen drawer. Manage? Kitty. Octavius, I know you can hear me. Do you see his face right there? No. It's pretty cute. All I can say is that I hope that we make it to two kilometers without breaking down. Yeah, this is the exact build model dimensions of the of old clunk clunk in our camper van. But it's much fancier. Wow. Ours was fancy. Not leather seats fancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does this hotel come with massage chairs? <laughs> You're the best. Oh man, room 1111. So auspicious. The hotel gave us little um, kids' juice boxes and two sandwiches. That's a pretty great welcome gift. As you saw on the train, all we had was cookies for the past forever. Are you ready for your sandwich? Yes. Oh man. Last time I used one of these chairs was at the airport. Oh my God. It's got this remote thing here with like unlimited options. Oh my face. How's it going over there? After having our muscles beaten down by a robot chair, it was time to get out and find some food. I've been calling this the BIF, but now I know why. It stands for Busan International Film Festival. So we decided to stay in the Nampodong area, which is where we are right now. This area seems very alive. Lots of street food, lots of night markets, lots of crazy flashing lights. This looks awesome. We were looking for a bit of a change of pace from the skyscrapers and crowds of Seoul, and Busan ended up being the perfect spot for that. First impressions, Busan is really cool. There's way more going on. It's way more dense than I thought it would be. I mean, like lights and street food and cool new things and these ladies in the carts selling drinks that we don't understand what's going on. It's just, it's just really interesting, really cool. 
so far Busan feels like a more laid back, kind of like where a lot of people actually live. Feels like there's a lot more real life here. There also appears to be no shortage of restaurants or food here. We're definitely not gonna starve. It feels like Busan is a very local, relaxed feeling. Like it's not trying to stay too modern or follow the latest trends. Just the smell of the food everywhere being cooked. People drinking soju right out in front of wherever they're going to go eat. Motorbikes going back and forth and the lights just starting to turn on. It feels like such a, like a special place, like, like the place we've been waiting for. We've stepped out maybe only five, 10 minutes from our hotel and we've already walked through like five or six markets. There's so many cool looking restaurants here. I honestly don't know how we're gonna choose. There's too many options and everything looks and smells so good. Thank you very much for What'd you get? I don't know. I saw everybody over here getting this thing. It looks like it's a pancake thing and they put some sunflower seeds and some pumpkin seeds inside of it and some sort of sauce on it. Mmm. Mmm. Sweet, savory. Savory. And a little sweet. Okay, it's like a fried pita bread almost, but a different kind of bread. It's way like softer than a pita bread would be. Way more fries. Filled with nuts in it. Some sort of like nut butter. It's not peanut butter, but it's something else. You want a bite? It's good. You'd like it. Mmm. Still, we knew we had to try one super important thing. The original KFC. Korean fried chicken. We'd heard it was absolutely mind-blowing and that it was totally different than the stuff we had at home. Okay, so we ended up at this great blue hut. <laughs> right with on the street menu. with this menu. Uh, we busted out the translator app, figured out roughly what we're ordering. I think we got half of a soy sauce chicken, half of a hot chicken. Did we order fries? We should probably order fries. And two beers, and then what else are we getting? There are no fries. And some shrimp. I think generally the rule that the smaller the plastic chair at the restaurant, the more delicious the food is going to be. And these plastic chairs are downright tiny. They honestly feel like they're gonna fall apart at any moment, which means or the food's gonna be amazing. Which means we ate too much <laughs> in these last few months. <laughs> Definitely true. Oh, yeah. Can you use this? I don't know what's happening here. But we just got two hot plates of fried chicken and side dishes of radish and onions, of course. And everything's really delicious. We walked in and within three minutes, we got all this food. The chicken here is lighter and crispier with a thin paper-like skin that really soaks up the sauce that comes with it. Whoa. Super crunchy. Not that heavily battered type that we usually see at The home. breading is light and crisp and it's really savory. This one's a soy sauce chicken, and whatever this is, is it's really good. It's just, it's so crunchy. Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's a totally different thing from the fried chicken back at home, and we fell in love with it after the first bite. Yes, a small plastic chair theory, undefeated. Somehow, I think after this meal, the plastic chairs are going to get a little smaller. Okay, so crucial to this experience is the salt that they bring in the little dish here. The salt that they bring in the little dish here. I don't know what it is. It might, might just be straight up MSG. Get that. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Wow. For me, KFC will always mean Korean fried chicken. Thank you. Oh, that was so good. How are you feeling? Full. Yeah, full, tired. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. Really the perfect chicken meal. So we're definitely in the right place for really good food. Parents just got a waffle, which looks amazing. And they're filming a full-on TV food production just right behind us over here. Busan is just alive and friendly and fun and wonderful. It's just it's the place to be. Now we're just trying to walk off that monstrous chicken dinner that we just had. And by walk it off, I mean just keep getting more food everywhere that we go. There's so much good street food everywhere here. And of course, there are selfie studios, photo booths everywhere. You know how sometimes people think of neon lights as kitschy and kind of tacky? Not here. 
The neon lights here are awesome. There's something so cool and hip and and shiny and new. I I love it here. I don't know, after this South Korea trip, I think I'm ready to bring back neon lights everywhere. <laughs> Coming to Busan, a city that we had never even heard of but are now fully enamored with, had shown us just how little we knew. And we can't wait to see more. So far, really, really loving Busan, and it's just night one. Come on, all right next to our hotel. What an incredible day, taking a bullet train, making it to Busan, having just an awesome night. There's a lot more to explore here. We'll see you tomorrow. So on this trip so far, we've taken, and wow, is there junk on mine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, this is the content you were looking for. Anyway, it's apple juice. The little lighthouse guy was making a heart with his hands. So cute. Hi, kitty. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say. <laughs>